topic 2.2 errors and uncertainties while taking measurements errors can be included from various sources like instruments environments and the experimenters themselves generally experimental errors are of two types systematic errors and random errors systematic errors are basically instrumental errors or errors in the methods of the measurements these errors remain present with every data by the same amount because of the systematic error a measurement line or curve shifts parallel from the original one common examples of systematic errors setting error or zero error in the measuring instruments level error faulty setup of the apparatus air resistance surface tensions etc setting error is a systematic error because if this error is not corrected with every data it will be present in all measurements so this is systematic error level error a surface should be horizontal but this is not actually horizontal there's some tilt on the surface then the level error will be included faulty setup of the apparatus apparatus are not correctly set up so the measurements will record will not correct this type of error will be systematic error an experiment say it should have performed in a vacuum but we are doing in air so air resistance will be included so this air resistance will cause systematic error setting error or zero error here there is an analog meter a meter its current initial current should be zero but we see that there are some currents showing by the same meter is about 0.1 ampere 0 to 1 this 1 ampere divided by 10.1 ampere this pointer shows a reading of 0.1 ampere so it shows some systematic error there is a top pen balance there is nothing on the pen so its reading should be 0 but it is showing a reading 0.2 gram this is systematic error or set this is setting error called systematic error there is a vernier caliper it's used to measure length initially the jaws are firmly closed there is no gap between the jaws so this zero and this zero should coincide but there is some little gap between these two zeros which is equal to 1 unit and 1 unit equal to 0 0.05 millimeter because this is the resolution of this instrument 0 0.05 millimeter so it has a systematic error or setting error equal to 0 0.025 millimeter this is micrometer screw gauge this is circular screw there is no gap initially between the spindle and the anvil so this datum line and this zero mark should have coincided but there are one unit behind this zero mark is one unit behind from the datum line so there is a systematic error or setting error of one unit negative one unit means 0 0.01 millimeter the least count is the resolution of micrometer screw gauge which is equal to 0 0.01 millimeter random errors these errors vary randomly about the mean when multiple readings are taken random errors occur due to the natural variations in measurements common examples personal error of the experimenter parallax error irregularities in size shape material com composition etc basically 
random errors are natural errors. When an experimenter takes time because of his human reaction and varying human reaction, the readings will vary. When he is taking readings time to time, the reading will vary at the same condition for the same measurement because of the random errors. Parallax error, the angle produced by two objects to the observer's eye is called parallax angle. While taking measurements, there are many situations where the target object cannot be placed very close to the measuring meter rule or dial. The angle produced by the target object and the meter rule is the parallax angle. Here, this is our target object spring. We want to measure the position of the lower end of this spring. So, if we take appropriately uh, observing from this line, the reading should be here and this is, this was the accurate reading. But if the experimenter observes this point or lower end from this position, then there will be some error. So, this is our target point and this is the reference point. So, this target point and reference point creates an angle to the observer's eye and this angle is called the parallax angle. Here there is an emitter. The pointer is the target object in this case and this dial is the reference object. This pointer and this dial makes this angle to the observer's eye and this angle is called the parallax angle. Measurement should be taken at zero parallax angle means that this angle should be zero. It means that eye position should be here so that this eye and this target object and this reference point should be in the same line or the line should be perpendicular to the scale. Similarly, here zero parallax angle means this pointer, this dial and this eye, the line making the C points are perpendicular with the dial. So, to make parallax angle zero, there is a mirror placed here. So, when the image of the pointer, the pointer and the object, uh, observer's eye on the same line, then parallax angle will be zero and there will be no parallax error. So, mirror is placed to overcome parallax error. If observer observes from a point above this zero parallax line, then the reading is much less than the actual one, which is 36.2 centimeters. If observer's eye is below the zero parallax line, the reading is high and higher and this is 48.9 centimeter. So, this is parallax error. It, readings taken from this position will give a parallax error. Readings taken from this position will give a parallax error. To avoid parallax error, we can use set square. This 90 degree set square. This side and this side are perpendicular. So, one side is placed parallel to the meter rule and this side is perpendicular to the meter rule. So, this lower end, this lower, this city square just touches this lower end very slightly and here the reading is 44.7 centimeter. This is the most accurate reading. Uncertainty basically is a probabilistic concept. Uncertainty in a measurement is the probability not to get the same measurement value while taking the measurement later. Lower the uncertainty, get the chance to get the 
सेम मेजरमेंट आफ्टरवर्ड्स और एट सम टाइम लेटर व्हेन द रीडिंग्स आर टेकन एट कीपिंग द सेम मेजरिंग कंडीशंस फॉर अ सिंगल मेजरमेंट रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ अ मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट और इट्स हाफ इज टेकन एज द अनसर्टेनिटी बिकॉज द डिफरेंस इज हियर वन मिलीमीटर so we cannot take a measurement which is very precise or accurate less than 1 mm if the size is less than 1 mm we cannot take measurement with this meter rule okay. so uncertainty is the is equal to the resolution which is equal to smallest scale reading in a standard measurement percentage uncertainty should not exceed than 1% although 5% is allowed in general resolution of a measuring instrument is its minimum scale division or minimum possible reading for a digital instrument the minimum floating point part is its resolution here this does this two apparatus or devices a digital device this is electronic timer digital electronic timer and this is digital mass balance this is correct to two decimal place the reading is 2.03 seconds so this is correct to two decimal place this is correct to one decimal place so its resolution is 0.1 and its resolution is 0.01 so its resolution is 0.01 second this is 0.1 gram the two analog meters this is meter rule and this is measuring cylinder here we see uh, 90 to 100 there are 10 divisions so each smallest division is equal to here 1 ml 90 ml to 100 ml is divided in 10 divisions each division is 1 ml so resolution of this apparatus is 1 ml and resolution of this meter rule is 1 mm for the 748 One centimeter divided by ten is division is one millimeter. Techniques in measurements. Lot of efforts and good techniques are to be adopted during taking measurements to keep errors minimum. Common lab techniques are discussed in short below. Technique one, taking average reading. from multiple values of the same measurement this is very common practice always we will try to take several measurements at the same time for the single reading in this way if we take mean, mean value or average value of the several readings then we can avoid random errors So random errors can be removed by taking average from the multiple readings of the same measurement. Common tools to increase accuracy in measurement here. I mean, in mechanics, we use set square, level meter, data logger with timer, motion sensor with data logger. Set square is used to keep the to keep something perpendicular because set square there is one angle 90 degree the two sides perpendicular sides so, so we can easily maintain two straight substance perpendicular by using set square level meter this is used to keep something horizontal level meter here we see this is level meter there is some bubble in liquid so when this is perfectly horizontal the bubble is placed or bubble situated between these two lines if bubble is between these two lines it confirms that the surface is horizontal here we see that the surface is not perfectly horizontal because bubble is not between these two lines in this diagram this vertical meter rule is ensure this is vertical by using this set square 
Set square can also be used to keep two scales perpendicular here. This is vertical. So, by using set square, we are keeping this horizontal. So, set square is a very useful apparatus. Data logger and timer. If time is very precise, very short, then it cannot be taken by human by human because human uh, error in time keeping is very significant our human error in taking time is about 0.2 second so when we are starting a timer 0.2 second is involved when we stop the timer again 0.2 second involves in the measurement so in time taken total 0.4 seconds are involved as error, random error. So, to minimize this error, we can use data logger system, electronic system, automatic system, which takes readings automatically, and in that case, we can increase our preciseness because human. Reaction time is 0.2 second, but here, when data logging system or electronic system is used, then resolution drops to several microseconds. So it improves. So measurement accuracy improves a lot. Motion sensor is usually used to read the position of moving objects and takes data thousands of data in one second so data logger must be needed to keep this data to record this data accurately in oscillation type experiments usually we remove some first few oscillations and last few oscillations because when oscillation starts and when oscillation stops there are some irregularities. To avoid irregularities, we remove first and last oscillations. Thermal type oscillations. In this type of oscillations, the common thing is to prevent heat loss. And to prevent heat loss, we usually use insulating materials. These are also called lagging materials. In electronic circuit or DC circuit or electrical experiments, there is a some common good technique is to keep current low. In that case, resistance change is very low because we know the resistance of the conducting wires depends on temperature. At high temperature, metal in conducting wires shows greater resistance. So current should be kept low in electrical circuit type resistance experiments. Using high resistance, if we use high resistance then uh, its value is much greater than the resistance of the conducting wires. We know conducting wires they show 1 to 2 ohms resistances. So, if we take resistance and 100 ohms or 1000 ohms or kilo or mega ohms, then the resistance of the conducting wires will be negligible. Optics type experiments we use commonly light shield so that lights cannot reach to the target place from other sources. To keep light blocked from other sources, we use light shield. So, these are common tools or techniques that I discussed. There are much more techniques and tools which will be discussed later.